Okay, hello everybody. Uh, well, I'm going to talk about mantas in Costa Rica in this uh, temporal and spatial. <laughs> okay. I'm going to talk about mantas in Costa Rica, so temporal and spatial movements of Moula virostris in Pacific Costa Rica. Well, it sounds very basic, but it it's the it's the it is it is like that because uh, it's a great honor to be the first person who is working with mantas focusing these species in the country and uh, when I started with this in 2018 it was like any question that you have about mantas in Costa Rica it was valid where uh, where they came from how long they stay in Costa Rica why they come to Costa Rica uh, what they do when they left uh, when they leave Costa Rica so all those questions were like I don't know I don't know I don't know so um, just to mention, I started with Pretona in 2011. That's the first time I saw mantas in Cabo Blanco. Then I started this uh, initiative for mantas. Well, it doesn't work. But then I started working in Crema in 2018. And we started with, with this campaign. It was a campaign in that moment. It was called Monitoreo Nacional de Mantas. And we were inviting all the people, divers, uh, dive shops and everything, to make us uh, reports of mantas everywhere in the coast, in the Pacific coast of Costa Rica. 2021, I started with Mantas Costa Rica, which is uh, thanks to Crema. Now it's uh, an NGO. Uh, an ex-girlfriend makes me this uh, logo. We change it. So, uh, yeah, we, <laughs> we change it. <laughs> so as you know, mantas are in danger, which means 70% of the population uh, is uh, decrease in the last, decline, excuse me, in the, in the last 10 years. But in Costa Rica, all the time we talk about manta season. And everybody talks about, yeah, mantas come to Costa Rica for a season. It's a season of mantas. So, and the people talk about mantas are in Costa Rica between December to May. But I was saying, like, it is a, a real manta season in the country. That's another question. So basically, the last, last year was the best year we have with mantas and reports of people. And this is a report in July, and uh, up north in, in Bad Islands, which is a national park. So, and then we have another report of mantas, August 12th. Another two reports in September 11, uh, September uh, 17th, last year. Well, yeah, this guy was very excited. I'm so sorry, I, I thought he was in mute. <laughs> I'm so sorry. And then we have another report in November 6th. So, uh, in some parts of the country, we have mantas year around, and especially up north. So, and then we start with mantas. We start uh, acoustic monitoring in Cabo Blanco in 2018. But I was thinking, and then I says, okay, we need to monitor a little bit more. So now we have, well, we have uh, eight uh, receivers in Cocos, one in Bad, Line, Bad Islands, Catalinas one. We have, uh, four uh, receivers here and one receiver in Caño. So now we are basically covering uh, the hotspots of mantas in Costa Rica. Well, at least the, the ones we know. So we are covering all these places. And, uh, and uh, with this, now we have 47 mantas already tagged between 2018 to 2024. Actually, this was the, the best year tagging mantas. And this is basically what we have uh, from Cabo Blanco, just one place because, as I said, we focus the, the monitoring in this area. So as you can see, the activity is concentrated in the, in the day, uh, day hours and happens with the same, this is months and number of detections and the detections are concentrated in between February to, to May, to the beginning of May. So. Uh, we compare, I get uh, data from uh, Bad Islands, and it's almost the same, like, like in Cabo Blanco, I compare this with, with Cabo Blanco, and the activity is concentrated in the, in, the, in, the, in the days of the hour, which is like 11 to 4 p.m. But in 2021, in April 2021, I tagged this Vanta in Cabo Blanco. Unfortunately, I, I can, uh, I can uh, see the, the sex of the animal, but I tagged this, this animal 
and six months later, these animals show up in, in Cocos Island. So this is now one of the best uh, detections we have. This manta makes around four, 500 kilometers from the coast. So this is very important, especially if we have this behavior with the rest of the animals, because now we can, uh, we can, uh, this, uh, we can use this information for management because we have a lot of transit of boats and, and fisheries here in this area. So it's gonna be very interesting if we have this behavior with another animals that we already tagged. And uh, of course, we are using photo ID. This is one of the most in, uh, famous mantas in Cabo Blanco area. We call it Mickey Mouse, as, as, as you can see. Mickey Mouse, yes. Ah, nice, nice. Buenísimo, buenísimo. There is another Mickey Mouse. We call it Mini Mickey Mouse. Could be the Mini, could be Mickey Mouse. I don't know. But this is the thing because we have only we only report this manta, and as you can see, it's very very easy to identify this manta. But only have reports of this manta in Cabo Blanco. So well, let's talk TikTok. Let's talk. All right, uh, and we have all this. Uh, huge campaign, as I said, with, uh, with dive centers and uh, well, people in general. Also, we have this uh, WhatsApp group with WhatsApp chat and we get in involved many, many people. Now we are trying to work with more and more and more people. And, uh, and we send this by, we use uh, Instagram and we send this uh, kind of information to the people. How is the behavior with mantas? We talk about the, the largest population of mantas that we already know, which is in Ecuador. I'm collaborating with this project too in, in, in Isla de la Plata with Michel Guerrero. And uh, yeah, what is the most important part of the, of the animal that we, that we need to identify? And things that we need, depth, temperature, date, hour, the place that we, they saw the, the manta. And this is the, the information of uh, where you can send these, uh, these reports and uh, the importance of uh, photo ID. So we have all this campaign. So, and basically what uh, we already have is more than 180 mantas already identified in the whole coast in the last two years. So um, what we can do with this? Now we know we have 66% uh, of uh, the mantas we already identified are females in, uh, in contrast with Ecuador, which is uh, the opposite they have 70% of the mantas are males. So this is another question, why they have males and why we have females. Actually, I asked to, to Eric, and he told me that here in Revilla Hill, the same, they have 70% uh, of females. So why these things are happening? And this is uh, information just with photos. And then uh, the new sightings, uh, we have uh, Seven of 10 mantas that we see in the coast is a new manta. So uh, talking with Michelle and, and other people, they says, we have a population which is growing. So uh, uh, we need to get the opposite. When we have uh, seven or eight mantas, uh, every time we see mantas is a, is a reciting. So now we are in the, uh, how, how can I tell it? The, now we, we can estimate the populations of the mantas in Costa Rica, but in, in, our, in this moment, well, it's growing and growing. And uh, it's, uh, it's the same that is happening in Ecuador. And they have already identified 4,000 mantas, and it's 70% of the mantas is a new manta. So it's crazy in this place. Mm -hmm. And again, well, we have the three uh, uh, colors of, uh, of the mantas, chevron, Leucistic and melanistic, in our case, 65, 60, 56% of the mantas are chevron, which is normal, it's the same in everywhere in Ecuador. Eric told me here in Mexico is the same. And uh, well, um, we can estimate again the, the months of, uh, most, the, the most important months uh, of sightings in Costa Rica, which is March and April. Uh, and there is another question, why the mantas leave uh, the country? Maybe something related with temperature, maybe something related with, uh, with salinity, could be. 
And um, another thing that we can estimate is the, the percentage of mantas with injuries. In our case, it's a very healthy population. 60% of the mantas, uh, they are uh, healthy. So as you can see, we determine things like broken uh, cephalic lobes. Uh, this is a, a gill net entangled in the manta. Mantas without cephalic lobes, without tails, with bites like these ones. We already saw orcas chasing mantas in Kaolanco, so it's amazing. And we are, run, 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 they're gonna hit you. So it's amazing to see the mantas, you know, in, in, this, in these uh, situations. We already saw orcas chasing mantas in Kaolanco, so uh, that's uh, very interesting too. And uh, well, now I'm uh, focused. I really like technologies. That's why I'm so excited with your project, because I really like technologies. So uh, we start tagging mantas, and the funny thing with this is uh, we have this uh, talk with, with, with children in a school, and uh, at the end of, of, the, of the talk, one child comes and says, uh, I want to help you. And I was like, okay, perfect. Uh, how can I help? And I says, well, we need uh, satellite tags, we need acoustic tags, we, we need uh, a lot of things. So I'm going to talk with my dad, and my dad is going to help you. Okay, perfect. I thought he said this, I was like, funny guy, nice. So one week later, a guy calls us and says, hey, how you doing? Uh, yeah, my, my, my kid told me that you need help. I was like, yeah, yeah. And he told me that you need satellite tags. And I was like, uh, well, yeah. And he says, well, I can help you. And I was like, and she says, uh, how many do you need? And I was like, well, the guy wants to help. Well, I need 50 tags. So he says, okay, how much is for the tax? It's around 3,000. Well, you know, uh, maybe I can help you with five. And I was like, okay, perfect. That was in 2022. And, uh, and the guy says, okay, perfect. So we start to buy the tax. It was brand new for me. So I called the company, White Life Computer. And they says, hey guys, I need five tax. And they said, yeah, of course. I, I call in, in February. And, uh, and the guy says, yeah, your order is gonna be ready uh, on May. And, I was like, no. and the guy told me, this is the condition. I want to be there, seeing you tagging the first manta with a satellite tag in Costa Rica. And I was like, okay, perfect. But I'm going to be there with my family in the middle of April. And I was like, perfect. So I called to the guys. I make the order. It says, yeah, your order is going to be ready by the end of May. And I was like, no, that's impossible. I need it on April. And well, they were super nice with me and they says, okay, let me talk with another people. So maybe we can, we can take uh, tax from other people and make it, and we can make it. So we did it and uh, we can tag uh, the first manta with this family. And again, we were diving two days before the conditions like here, blue water, everything perfect, mantas. So it was Friday. We were like, perfect, Sunday. We went with this family, they brought kids, you know. It was zero visibility, a lot of current. Well, it was like, okay, perfect. So we make the first immersion and, uh, and, and, uh, and <laughs> nothing happens, no mantas. And the guy says, okay, you have one more chance. But he saw me like, you know, you have one chance to tag mantas. And I was like, yeah, I know, sir, I know. So he says, okay, ready, let's go. So finally, we were waiting and waiting and waiting. They, uh, well, they, uh, they were ready to go to the surface. And I said, no, we have to stay. So at the end of the, of the, of the dive, we saw this manta and I tagged it and the family was happy. So the guy told me, Joe, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna help you a little bit more. So now basically we're talking to get more satellite tags with this family, but yeah, it was a terrible and a stressing story with this, with this tax. And then I met this other family and they helped me with another eight tax. So basically now we have uh, this number and this is the results that I have. I want to thank you to my friend and my, and my roommate Cesar because we made this, uh, this uh, map yesterday and um, and this is what is happening with the mantas now. This is brand new information. Actually, I downloaded this information yesterday. 
and as you can see the mantas are moving to north. I have uh, this theory about the movements of the mantas when they leave uh, the coast and I thought it was like something similar than whales. Whales in Costa Rica we have whales from north and whales from south. So and we are in the middle of these two important places right Mexico and Isla de la Plata and Galapagos. So and I was thinking that maybe we were sharing these two populations in Costa Rica or at least at least close to Central America. But well, I checked this manta. This is the south part of Costa Rica. I checked this manta and she moves up north. And uh, the other ones up north, they are moving the same and they are moving close to the platform. So maybe they are feeding in this in this area, which is close to to the doma, el domo termico, thermic dome. So this is another map of uh, dissolved uh, oxygen in the water. So as you can see the mantas are looking for this uh, uh, oxygen, well, with, the, with more concentration of oxygen areas. Like the, we, I was talking with, with Cesar and he told me that hammerheads are doing the same. So maybe they, they prefer to stay in, this, uh, in these areas. And this is happening between May to December when they, uh, when they leave the coast of Costa Rica. And uh, I have another theory, as I said, with temperature, but also with salinity, because we have a very, very strong rainy season in Costa Rica between May to December. So when, as soon as, as soon as start uh, rains in Costa Rica, we, well, mantas disappear. So maybe uh, I was thinking that maybe it's related with salinity. And as you can see here, this is the, the places with the uh, with highest, uh, concentration of, of salinity here in this uh, in these months too so maybe it's a, a relation with these two maybe it's, it's one of the most important factors uh, with the mantas so uh, yeah it's very short and what's, what's next now in, in our study we want to see another things because well Andres is telling that but most of the time when we get information from Cabo Blanco which is, which is located here in the middle of the Pacific coast of Costa Rica uh, no reports in, in the other places. And the mantas that we already identified here, uh, we never see them in these areas. And also when we saw mantas in, in Caño, there is uh, only one manta moves to Caño, only one manta moves to Catalinas, and the one that I showed to, 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 Coco, to Coco Islands. And it's 47 tags. So and the mantas stay in this area. So maybe I believe it's a, a, a side fidelity. So I want to, to prove this. I want to tag more mantas. Now I already tagged 47 mantas here. I want to concentrate in these two areas to see what's going on with the connectivity of the mantas. Uh, well, the, the migration patterns with satellite tags and focus well in, in other areas like south and north. And this is the map of these uh, tags. Here, I tagged this manta up north and she was around Bat Islands all the time. And then uh, this manta decided to move to the platform and continue the, the trip up north. And this manta, it was stacked in, in Bat Islands. This is the south part of Costa Rica. And again, it stayed there for a little while and then uh, moves to next to the platform. And now it's close to El Salvador and Guatemala area. Actually, I checked this information this morning and now these mantas are moving to Mexico. So who knows, and maybe they come to, to Revilla, who knows. So, and, and this is another uh, manta that I tagged in 2022, Mickey Mouse. And uh, to see, I, I, I tagged this manta in the middle of the season to see what, what, uh, what, uh, what's going on with this manta, what they're gonna do. And she stays close to Cabo Blanco and then move a little bit to the platform. And uh, with the movements, the movements, I, I thought this manta is going to move to to south. Well, start to make these movements and Caño Islands is, is here. So I thought the manta is going to move to, to Caño and then the manta decided to move again up north and move close to to Cabo Blanco and then we lose uh, connection of the tag. But maybe 
maybe it's they they prefer these uh, these uh, cleaning stations. Actually, we believe the mantas are in Costa Rica because of the cleaning stations. That's the reason that they are there. And uh, now we are working in uh, cleaning stations, seeing the abundance of the fishes and uh, and the sizes, and making relationship with this, because I believe all the the cleaning stations around the Pacific coast are different. So maybe they prefer these places because of the cleaning stations. And as you can see, this manta is making the same. She concentrates all the moves very close to this area, which is called Bajo del Diablo, which is the very famous place for mantas. And it's focused in this area. I don't have movements to another places in the, in the coast. And uh, I want to, well, I, I took this from a Migramar uh, website, but I want to generate a, a, a map like this to understand the mantas populations in the Eastern Tropical Pacific. And also I'm looking for a PhD now, and uh, I want to make a genetic analy analysis with mantas, with tissues. I already talked with Mauricio to get access for the tissues here in Mexico. And uh, well, I have in Costa Rica now a lot of uh, tissue samples. In uh, Ecuador, I'm working with Michelle, so we are getting a lot of tissue samples there. And I talked with Diana uh, Palmino in, in, in uh, Galapagos to get access to these uh, tissues. And my idea is try to relate this because they already <clears throat> make this analysis with these two uh, populations of mantas. And Galapagos is a separate uh, manta population. It's uh, shared with the mantas in the coast but it's like 50% of this population is shared with Galapagos. The other 50%, they don't know where these mantas came from. So maybe they are connected with mantas in Costa Rica or Colombia, Panama, because we have a lot of movements of mantas here. Um, and this is the idea, try to correlate these, uh, these, uh, these populations in the Eastern Tropical Pacific. And uh, last year I was invited to an expedition in Ecuador so and uh, it was something like this. It was people from Mexico, Peru, Costa Rica, Colombia, Ecuador. And uh, I organized this uh, meeting with, with these uh, researchers and I said, hey, guys, we have to collaborate and work together to see what's going on with mantas. So we make this uh, first uh, meeting with these guys. And well, this is the expedition. And the idea is try to create something like Icapo, like Migramar and things like that with the Eastern Tropical Pacific Manta Network. So we are working now with this. I'm trying to organize all these guys, but it's very, it's very complicated, you know, try to get the people together. Yeah. <laughs> so we are trying to make this uh, Manta Network because we share experiences and the people here in Mexico, they have narco traffic. Uh, well, a lot of problems with fisheries. Mantas are uh, a fisheries subject. So it's different in Costa Rica, it's different situations in, in Ecuador. So maybe if we work all together, maybe we can try to change this situation in the, in the region. And well, this is our sponsors. These two families, they don't want to, they don't let me to show who's the people who's giving me the money. And uh, stakeholders, I have a lot of uh, dive centers and people who is helping. And you can follow us in social media. And thank you, um, Pelagios and Ocean Blue Tree for this opportunity to be here. And thanks. <laughs> and I, I, I want to show you this, uh, this video because the, the cleaning stations in Costa Rica are really, really different than here. Actually, we have these, uh, these uh, rocky formations. It's very flat. And you can see the mantas coming like, a, like an airplane. When it's landing, you can see the mantas far, far away they are coming from. And, uh, and you can see the, the butterfly fishes crazy about mantas, trying to clean them, clean them up. And here, when I saw the mantas in Socorro, the butterflies, they were like, I really don't care mantas. So, and the behavior of these animals changed a lot in every region. So it's very, very interesting. And that's it. Thank you. Questions? Thank you.